How's it going everybody? I am Slavrin Torsky and welcome to the channel. So we finally had some updates from CD Projekt Red on Cyberpunk 2077. Basically an apology video with a nice little bonus of having a roadmap in there. There aren't exact dates on the roadmap so don't get too excited but it does give you an idea of kind of what to expect for the year. They, uh, I think they've learned their lesson from the past and they're not dedicating themselves to or setting in stone certain dates. Uh, with how much everyone gets upset. So this is directly from their website. This is Our Commitment is the name of it. So it's Cyberpunk 2077, Our Commitment to Quality. And today is January 13th, 2021. So I'm still trying to get used to that date. It is Wednesday. All right. Now, uh, if you do enjoy watching Cyberpunk videos, Marvel's Avengers, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, gaming videos, even firearms I do on this channel, go ahead and subscribe. That way uh, you can see all the new updates coming out, and I plan on this year being a really good year. We've been growing a lot last year, and we're getting pretty close to being at 1,000 subscribers, so we're trying to push that mark to see if we can get there by March. I think we can. All right, so enough of my spiel. Getting straight here. Dear gamers, we are committed to fixing bugs and crashes, and we will continue to work and improve the game via future updates to make sure you're enjoying the game regardless of the platform. We, I apologize if you can hear my dog in the background, he's a jerk. We will use this space to inform you about the progress being made on Cyberpunk 2077's further development, including information about updates and improvements, free DLCs, and more. Below you'll find CD Projekt Red's co-founder's personal explanation of what the days leading up to the launch of Cyberpunk 2077 looked like, sharing the studio's perspective on what happened with the game and on old generation consoles. Thank you, CD Projekt Red. So, I almost had a little spoiler there. So here's, you can actually go on there, uh, it's cyberpunk.net. You can actually go on there to watch the video directly. We'll give you a little taste of what to expect. Alright, I don't want to play the whole video so I don't get taken down from YouTube or something because, you know, even though I'm trying to give good advice here and give them good, a little bit of good PR, uh, YouTube doesn't like that apparently. But you can watch the whole video, it's about 5 minutes, 10 seconds on here. It sounds like they're sincere, he realizes that they messed up and they're trying to fix it. But they're not making any commitments in the video. I understand that from a business perspective, so I'm not going to jump on them too hard about that. But uh, further on in the video, we'll get straight to the roadmaps, because this is kind of what everybody wants to see anyways. So Cyberpunk 2077 updates roadmap. So the game released. We're already up to hotfix 1.06, then 2021, so we are here right now. Patch 1.1 should be coming soon. I believe he says in the next 10 days or so. Then patch 1.2. And what they're doing is they're going to be focusing on fixing the problems before they release the free DLCs. That's what they said, in, or he said in the video. So we won't be getting those free DLCs till things are fixed. I agree with that decision. I think it's important to fix the game before you give us free stuff. They are pushing back the next-gen console update till the second half of this year, 2021. And you see there's nothing for 2022 listed here. But this is kind of a generalized roadmap. Like I told you, there's no actual dates. It's just kind of a, in general, what to expect. So here's some of the facts. Uh, why is there such a gap between PC versions of Cyberpunk 2077 and old versions? Uh, answer, it is huge in scope. Its features have multiple multitude of custom objects, interacting systems, mechanics. He says, I think they copy-pasted this directly from what he said. Uh, Let's see, uh, we made it even more difficult for ourselves by first wanting to make the game look epic on PCs and adjusting at consoles. So basically they went to the highest tech and then they scored it down for consoles. I kind of understand why they did this considering that the Witcher, the original Witcher game was on PC first, then they made The Witcher 2, then they ported that to consoles well after Witcher 2 came out, then The Witcher 3, so and then this, they, they seem to have a PC first console secondary mindset, I kind of get where they're coming from there. I'm not giving them a free pass, but I do get it. 
What are the main issues that made development for consoles difficult? Uh, so the main culprit was having to constantly improve our in-game streaming system for old-gen consoles. Streaming is responsible for feeding the engine with what you see on screen, as well as the game mechanics. Since the city is so packed, and the disk bandwidth of old-gen consoles is what it is, this is something that constantly challenged us. So I could see that, especially with how long it took, the technology just kept getting better and better on PCs while consoles stayed where they were. Didn't you test old consoles to keep tabs on the experience? We did, and as it turned out, our testing did not show many of the issues we experienced playing the game. They saw significant improvements closer to launch, and they believed they'd deliver the final project, product, but unfortunately they did not. All of these things are answered in the video, actually. Uh, why was there a gap between PC and console reviews? They started sending out PC review keys to start the review process in the first week of December. December 10th launch day, they had a really good start with PC reviews, and while it's not perfect, this is the version of the game they are very proud of. When it comes to the review process for consoles, at the same time the PC codes were sent out, they were still working hard to improve the quality of the game on old gen. Every extra day that we worked on the Day Zero update brought visible improvements, and that's why they started sending out the console codes for reviews on the 8th of December, which is later than they had planned, so two days before release. What have you done since launch to make it better? Uh, they have been doing the hot fixes so far, so we know that they are working on it. What are you going to do going forward? We're focused on fixing the bugs and crashes players are experiencing across every platform, so you can expect more in the way of patches, both small and large, to be released regularly. The first update will drop in the next 10 days, and it will be followed by a larger, more significant update in the weeks after. So we're going to get that first update by uh, January 23rd, at the latest. Our plans for supporting Cyberpunk 2077 in the long term are unchanged, and we will continue to introduce updates and patches to give players across all platforms a better experience. So you've said there would be free DLC in the game in early 2021. Will this be impacted by the improvements? That's what I said earlier, they're going to be pushing it back. Just like The Witcher 3, they do have free DLC, which was really nice. But they are going to... However, they decided that the priority is working on the most important fixes and updates. We already said that earlier. When can they expect the next-gen update? For those who are playing the game on next-gen consoles via backwards compatibility, they're planning the free update this year. Aiming for the second half of this year, and they'll re reveal more when it gets closer to that time. Are you making the team crunch to work the patches? The team is working to bring relevant fixes to the game without any obligatory overtime. I'm sure it's available for the people that want it, and I imagine they make pretty good money, so I would take the overtime myself. You can always use extra money. But they're not making it mandatory. When is the game coming back to the PlayStation 4? They're working on fixes and updates, and are working with Sony to bring it back to the PlayStation Store ASAP. What is the status of the Help Me Refund initiative? The initiative is progressing according to plan, and they sent out the first wave of reimbursements, so they're doing it in waves. Most companies do that. And that's the last of it. I do highly suggest you to watch the video. Actually seeing him um, discussing it directly to the camera, I think it's very tasteful um, to actually have him on camera to publicly apologize. That is a good move. And they can start, I think 2021 is the year where they can start really trying to earn back the trust of the fans and the gamers. But that's it. I highly suggest you watch the video, check out their website for updates, things like that. And of course, check out my channel for any more updates coming up, any uh, other video games, things like that. I'm constantly putting out new content and trying to build the channel as much as I can. So I look forward to you subscribe and like any of the videos that you do like. Feel free to leave comments as well if you have any things that you'd like to change about the channel or any updates, things like that. Or even, heck, a firearm that you'd like me to review. Put that in the channel too because I do that as well. And uh, we'll see what we can do. But that's all I have for you today. I hope everyone out there stays safe, and we'll see you again in the next video. Later, guys.